Hello, my name is Austin Harley, and today's video is gonna be a little bit different because I'm gonna take you through my three-year journey being a real estate agent. I'm gonna share with you how I got to where I am today throughout this journey and the few times that I went broke, completely broke, had no money to pay rent. Really just show you where I got the business from, my whole journey, and to give you a little bit more of my personal life in this. And I'm telling you, as I'm going through, I'm writing down some notes. I'm, I'm reading through some of the stuff and some of the stuff is crazy. I'm like, wow, did I really just do that? I would never do that again. Pretty stupid. But uh, nonetheless, I wanted to share with you kind of a realistic approach of what it takes to be a really successful real estate agent. What you have to do, what you have to sacrifice and if it's going to be a good fit for you i'm a fairly new youtuber at this time so uh, to help me kind of get this message out to other people because my goal is to inspire other people to chase their dreams and chase success and really get away from that nine to five job that doesn't pay you what you're worth uh, what I'll need you to do is I'll need you to give this video a thumbs up because I promise you I spent a lot of time editing and planning in this video. I just had a crazy move to Florida from where I was a real estate agent up in Virginia and I'll share with you how I was able to do that basically without even thinking about it because of the freedom that real estate really gave me over these past three years. Uh, let me get right into jumping into the timeline of things. So I got licensed in November 2016. Before I got licensed, actually, I was working at Wells Fargo uh, during that whole scandal thing, and I, act I had actually gotten fired. They were just laying off a lot of employees and found the absolute craziest reason to let go of some of their employees, and I just happened to be one of those people that they had to let go. My heart, my soul into that company. Now, I was just a banker. I was making 40,000 a year. I was 20 years old when that happened. I mean, I was having visions of becoming a mortgage banker or a financial advisor. I, I was so hungry. I was talking to everyone on the team, always showing up to the meeting. And when they fired me, it just destroyed me. It, it completely crushed my dream. You know, I was super down at the same time. I had broken up with my girlfriend. So I was just like, really, really low. A few months before I got fired, I had bought the course. By the way, I'll leave a link in the description for the course if you're interested in the course that I use to get licensed the easiest way. And once I got fired, I had no job and I had just signed a lease to pay rent at a more expensive place than I was paying before. So I was renting a room. I mean, I was dirt broke. I had no savings and to get rehired from another bank, especially after you've been fired and especially after the whole Wells Fargo thing, people didn't really look at you that well. So I was screwed. I, I totally thought that it was the end. So when I got fired, I put my all into it. 30 days, I knocked out the entire course. A month later, I took the course and, and passed and uh, I was officially licensed as a realtor. Thankfully, by that time, I had scored another job at Capital One. Oh, by the way, I didn't even paint the picture, but this entire, my entire real estate journey happened in the Northern Virginia and DC metro area. I think that's really important because the price points are a little bit different in there than you'll find in most parts of the nation, but there's also, because of the price points, a lot of competition. Literally, according to NVAR, which is Northern Virginia Association of Realtors, there's like 120,000 realtors just in that small little area. It's like made up of three counties. It's crazy. So I don't want to let that discourage you. There's always gonna be competition in whatever industry you go into. You just gotta put your best foot forward and keep going through it. But I don't wanna start this video out by saying 2016 was my first year because it really wasn't. There was two months left. I just hanged my license with a broker and I had no idea what I was doing. So we're gonna start this video from 2017 moving to 2018 as my first year in real estate. 2017, I was always trying to figure out ways to make more money. I had just got rehired at Capital One making about 45,000 a year on a hourly basis. And I was able to pay my bills again. I was still broke because don't get me wrong, after you spend money on a car, insurance, just basic eating habits, you're basically not saving more than like a few hundred bucks a month. <laughs> I was renting a room for like 800 bucks. And so what I started to do is the first thing I did is I got a part-time job. I worked that job the, uh, uh, up until six months. So up until the summer of 2017. So I was working two jobs. The third thing I did immediately, cause I took a job inside of Best Buy working for Epson printers, is I started seeing how much that uh, Best Buy was reselling their refurbished products for. So I would go on Craig's, find people giving away those old MacBook Pros and those old iPhones and those old iPads, maybe a broken screen, something that I could add value to. And I would go in, I would make them a low ball offer, meet with the person, on Craigslist, uh, buy their product, go replace the screen myself. I had the little kit or whatever was wrong with it, the battery, I would do it myself. And then I would resell it on Craigslist again. So I had three things going for me, but it, during the first 
course of my, I guess, career in real estate, I wasn't doing anything at all. It wasn't until midsummer, my broker called me and uh, he connected me with another real estate agent that was down in the uh, Norfolk area of Virginia. This agent had a rental referral for me. And uh, at the time, you know, I had no business. I wasn't even doing anything in real estate. I was so pumped. I was ready to go. I was ready to get my first client. Went and met with the guy. I had to drive like, oh my God, like an hour and a half away to Springfield, Virginia, where I met the guy at a like $2,000 rental. And for those of you who don't know, the rental market in real estate can be profitable, but you don't make a lot of money doing the actual rental transactions. You would just kind of hope and pray that they would eventually buy and still use you. So you would do it in the beginning just to make a little bit of money. Typically you would get 25, 30% of the first month's rent. So if you're looking at a $2,000 rental, I mean, what is the math on that? You're looking at like 500 bucks. Um, for driving an hour and a half back and forth, showing people rentals, you're really not making any money at the end of the day. I was just so stoked. So met with the guy and on top of that, the guy was charging me a 25% referral fee. Which, now that I look back at that, I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? This guy is so greedy. He was literally gonna make like a hundred dollar referral fee if I closed the rental transaction. It was the stupidest thing in the world. I went and drove an hour and a half to meet with this guy in rush hour traffic, 5 p.m. Uh, showed up in a you know my normal bank attire, dress shirt, dress shoes. After I started talking with this guy and showing him kind of like the market knowledge, because I would never just show up to meet someone without doing research of the area that they're looking in. I figured out that the guy actually really wanted to buy Turns out he didn't end up getting a rental. I ended up closing him on a buy transaction three months later on a $400,000 single family house, my very first transaction ever. And this this house was just sitting on the market and uh, we lowballed them. You know, he was, a, he was a stingy guy, stingy buyer, as you'll find out, all pretty much all buyers are. We lowballed them, they ended up accepting the offer, had no idea what I was doing the whole time. Next thing you know, I got $8,500 showing up at my door. I had closed my first deal. Turns out that person ended up referring me another deal down the road that made me another $10,000 two years down the road. That was in 2019. I told myself in the beginning of 2017 why when I started working at Capital One that I was gonna give myself one year. One year more working at the bank because I hated it to death. And then I was going to completely quit and uh, stop and give my full effort towards real estate. However, like a lot of people do, and I'm so guilty of this. I'm scatterbrained, I was young, I was hungry, I wanted the fastest and easiest route to get uh, success. So, you know, I had a lot of friends at the time that were going to school. I dropped out of college like twice before that. <laughs> and I, I literally, towards the end of 2017, started going back to school for ISOM, which is Information Systems Operation Management. This is after I closed the $8,500 deal. So again, I'm looking back at the past and I'm like, what the heck was I doing? Like, I had already had a little taste of success in my first deal and I still didn't believe in myself. I started going back to school. I signed up for full-time classes while I was going to Capital One. I realized halfway through it, it, it just wasn't for me. I was sitting in an accounting class. I like, literally, no joke, just got up and walked out when he started talking about some stuff I have no idea to this day what it's about. Don't get me wrong, I wish I had stayed in that class because now I'm dealing with some accounting problems that I can't really YouTube. They should have taught me in, in uh, college, but I should have paid attention more importantly. <laughs> so uh, I literally got up out of class, left, dropped out of college, ended up having to pay them like $11,000 or something like that. It was a local community college. I'm still paying student loans in the classes that I dropped out. I just completely quit college. And uh, I decided to give it in starting 2018, my full 100%. End of 2017, after doing a few rental transactions, I only made like 10 grand. To me, it was a lot of money because it was pure pocket spending money. But the problem with me, as you'll start to learn in 2018, my second year, I start to spend a lot of my money on things to test them out. I'm not afraid to spend money to see if I can get a return back. But in the beginning, I didn't really think about where I was throwing my money. I would just throw it at anything. So like at 8,000, I told you I took the whole family out to eat. That's 350. Um, I finally bought myself a better camera that was like $800 and I started making YouTube videos around the same time as well which ended up working out a little bit kind of for me so don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button and I'd like to take a moment to thank our sponsor of the video Bella I don't know if you could see from my shirt but apparently I am the world's best Yorkshire Dad. Thank you to our sponsor, Bella. I do. I spent money on Yelp ads, which by the way, aren't that great. I'm going to show you later on in this video, more profitable ways you can get business as a realtor. But 2017 was a complete mess. I didn't make that much money. 10 grand is not a lot. It went straight into basically testing out what the heck I was doing. And starting 2018, January, I quit my job, gave my two weeks notice. I was like, screw it. It's not going to work out. I need to give my full energy towards uh, real estate. I had just dropped out of college, everything, like everything was going on. So I joined a team 
I joined a team at a local brokerage in Loudoun County and uh, I was on an 80-20 split. It, and, and to put this in perspective, it doesn't sound like that you know, big of a deal. It's just 20%, you're gonna learn a lot. But I had so much pride in the way of thinking I knew it all. <laughs> at the time after doing like one deal. But in the end, you know, I had a lot to learn. I ended up pulling the trigger, making the switch, and it was a really, really good decision. Joining a team was probably like one of the better decisions that I made in real estate. The reason why I say that is because learning the hard way, it's just the way my brain is wired. I have to mess up and fail to learn the hard way. But joining a team skipped along my career step about a year. So starting 2018, I joined the team, 80-20. I didn't get any business out of it, let me just say that. And you know the weird thing about joining a team is, for the most part, the reason why people would join a team, besides just to learn, is to get their feet wet with transactions. But this was a person that just started their team out, so you know, I, I wasn't, she tried to give me some transactions, but I was, again, I was just too prideful. I didn't want to take anything from her. It was really weird. <laughs> Saying that out loud sounds really stupid. <laughs> Probably should have been like, awesome, when you just take the freaking deal and make the money and then give her the split. I don't know why, I just wanted to do everything myself, my branding, everything myself. And she was okay with that, so we went on our ways. 2018 was really the turning point of my real estate career. I think that I made a very reasonable salary. Again, last year I went from 10,000. In 2018, I did about 9 million in sales, um, which for the Northern Virginia market is a pretty decent volume. I made about $90,000. The problem is I had spent so much time chasing and chasing after business. I mean, I was working like 60 hour weeks holding open houses, calling FISBO, listing investment leads, finding rentals, trying to convert them to buy. Uh, I was doing everything. Everything. I was even automatically setting uh, emails to for sale by owners on Craigslist through a software that I had uh, developed and seen from an investment course that I had bought like three years ago. I mean, as creative and as cheap as possible, I was figuring out every single free way you can get business. And I truly believe that that 2018 year proved that no matter what you have in your bank account, because I had nothing in my bank account from the year prior, that you can make it being a real estate agent if you want. Now, it's what you do when you make the money that you make making it, if that made sense, that really counts. So in 2018, I did everything from door knocking to mailers to Craigslist uh, auto emails to Craigslist rental ads. I was doing a lot of renters. I think about like 20,000 of my income was purely from renters and the other portion of the 70,000 commissions was from buy and sale transactions. I did for sale by owners, I would pick up the phone on Zillow and literally find the person and convince them to meet with me. And I would keep following up, keep following up, keep emailing them, keep texting them until they would hire me. The amount of rejection I had to face to make that amount of $90,000 in 2018 was insane. Now the interesting thing about my 2018 year of making that 90,000 in gross commission was that the timeline of making that whole 90,000 was biased towards the front end of the year. So January through about right up till August, I had made about $80,000, uh, which I thought was insane. I, I was 22 years old at the time, making $80,000 in seven months. I was like, oh my God, I, this, is, this is truly made it. I, I made it. I thought I had made it. Problem is, just like the year in 2017, I didn't learn my lesson. I blew all of my money. Now, blue is not really the right word. I used all of my money on experimenting out different things. I tried Facebook ads. I had tried online SEO marketing to see what's going on there. I had tried different mailers. Everything I could do to get my hands on. As soon as I literally got a commission check, I would pay my own bills. And I was still renting a room at this time. Don't get me wrong. Spent it immediately on some form of advertising to get more business. The problem is I didn't know how to control that at the time. So I was just spending way too much money and I ended up spending a lot more money on advertising than I did on the actual money that I was receiving incoming. So coming that August month, I had completely gone broke. Literally, like I was renting a room and I couldn't even pay my rent. And I had just made $80,000 in eight months. And I hadn't even honestly done that much. You know, I probably closed like 7 million in transactions. I was at the point where I was like, okay, I proved to myself that I can make it sustaining a decent income in real estate, but you know, I, I was broke and this isn't a good lifestyle. It's not a good feeling to have. You know what I did is I took, regrettably, a job working night shifts from 12 a.m. to 8 a.m. at UPS. <laughs> and I, my goal was, because I had just started to get a little bit of traction with my Facebook advertising that I was doing, I had just started to get a little bit of traction, but I had no money, no consistent income, no deals, nothing in the pipeline. I just had like a few thousand dollars in my checking account, which was to pay next month's rent. So I took a job at UPS, 
night shift. I think I was getting paid like 15 bucks an hour. So I went, I don't know my hourly rate at that year, but I went from making in eight months, $80,000 to working for $15 an hour because I didn't spend my money appropriately. And I worked there for one week, partially because I couldn't wake up anymore and the other half because I got just enough money to plug back into my Facebook ads so that I got a uh, buyer on the hook. Now I had met with this buyer and he wanted to buy a uh, townhome, a new construction townhome. I was running those new construction lookalike pictures. Get your free list of homes, you know, fill out the lead form, you know, they just click continue and I was calling every single day. I was calling 9 a.m., uh, 12 p.m. to every single hour. I felt like I was calling business to try to see who would want to work with me. Who's ready to buy a house? The market's hot pretty much. And one guy hung up on me like three times. It was ridiculous. Uh, this is while I was working at UPS. Hung up on me like three times and then finally, I just told him straight up. The next time I called him, I was like, look, I'm not trying to waste your time. I don't want you to waste my time. I'm calling to help you find a home. You clicked on our ad, so obviously you have some type of interest in buying a home. And then he was just straight up honest with me. He said, look, you know, I'm sorry. You know, I've been getting a lot of calls from realtors. You've been the only person that's been straightforward with me. I am looking to buy, but I'm looking to buy this winter. Right off that, I said, great, that's fantastic. However, I want you to know what's in the market. Let me start to go tour homes for you. So this is where I started getting a little bit creative with things. I wanted to show the client that I was working for them before they even knew it. I quit UPS because I couldn't honestly do the sleeping thing anymore. I went out and I videotaped every single townhome within a $300 to $550,000 price range, all the new construction ones, and I sent him videos of everything. He loved it. He absolutely loved it. We started texting almost like every other day, it seems like. Finally ended up getting him approved. Next thing you know, it was November. Got him under contract uh, for my last deal of uh, 2018. And I really, really had to stretch on money but I had so much faith that this guy was going to work with me and refer me future clients that I stuck with it. You know, against all odds, we ended up closing literally December 30th of 2018. And that was like a $12,000 commission, which ended up netting me the 90 or 91,000. I don't remember how much. I'll probably screen it over here. Now, so here we are. So I went from completely broke, uh, working three, two, three different jobs, hustling on the side to closing $80,000 in commissions in eight months to completely broke again. <laughs> and then I closed one more deal, which profited me 12 grand at the end of the year. Now, I knew at this point, I had learned from my last starting 2019 that I had to do something right with those $12,000. And I knew the one thing that had worked with me was the Facebook ads. So I took half of that money, $6,000, and I plugged it straight into Facebook. I started making videos. I started uh, targeting people, taking courses, buying a website, uh, which by the way, if you want access to the website that I use now, even to run my own Facebook ads, it's carrot.com. I'm gonna leave a description down below and you can click on that link. And um, I promise you guys, they are an awesome website to use to get your own leads if you wanna do some type of online marketing. The difference that I wanted to make in 2019 coming up was that I wanted to have the clients chase after me instead of me in 2018 chasing after the clients. And oh my God, the entire perspective changed because now all I was doing instead of going and showing homes left and right and not being able to know what I was doing and if they were gonna close, if they were truly motivated, just wanted to get them under contract. Now all I would do is I would sit at home, do my Facebook ads in the morning, go to the gym, hop on the phone, call the leads, and then go show properties. Usually it was in the evening for me after I would make my second round of calls because that's when most people got off the work. But again, those were people clicking on something that I was offering them. It was a lot more warmer of a call than me calling a for sale by owner on Zillow and saying, hey, you should list with me. <laughs> so starting 2019, I had the absolute best year. Started a real estate team and uh, I just wanted to do it. I, I saw that there was potential in what I was doing. People were reaching out to me. I started closing a bunch of deals. I learned so much in 2019. Once I had put my full 110% effort into one category of getting business, which was online marketing. So the point of me telling you this is that in 2018, the learning lesson that I took is that I was putting all my effort scattered into all these different things, putting all my money into these different categories. And I never really focused on one or a few individual categories or uh, like they say, pillars in real estate. At the end of 2019, 
I had gross $251,988.14. One year, I went from making $10,000 in 2017 to $90,000 gross in 2018 and basically broke and restarted again to in 2019, $250,000 gross. Now, uh, the broker had a transaction fee. I was on 100% commission, so I ended up netting around 234,000. The reason why I'm explaining this to you is because in 2019, the most valuable thing I learned, which if you're in the real estate game right now, I would highly recommend you to do your uh, research on, is leverage. I realized that you know, I didn't have a big team. I had just started referring business out to these people who were hungry, these agents that wanted to go after this business. And I had coached them and trained them. And yes, there was a dip in my income. However, I was only renting a room. What could I not afford? I had already been broke before barely paying my rent. I figured worst case scenario, it's gonna happen again. I started sending all my business out. The ability of being able to convert the leads over the phone in my business and become kind of like the lead generation source. Being able to disperse it out to the right person, it was a fantastic feeling. I worked less too, not only that. So in 2018, I had busted my butt just to make $90,000 and I was working like 60 hours a week, like no joke. I would get in the office at like 7 a.m. and I would go home at like 6 p.m. or 7 p.m and I would continue working on my website till like 12 a.m. <laughs> like I had no life at all. I wouldn't go out and see anyone. I was just solely focused on real estate. That is pretty much the biggest lesson that I've learned throughout this three year journey. I didn't wanna make this video just to you know show you how much I make, but I, I feel like it's very important to show you the potential that you have just by carving your way through this industry. There's so much noise in this industry. Everyone in the first year was telling me, you need to go this direction, you need to go that direction, you need to do rentals. No, don't do rentals, it's a waste of your time. You need to do this. If I had just watched a video like this and just stuck to one or two things for at least one year, give yourself just one year, I would have been making way more money than I'm making now. In 2019, I ended up doing about 16 million in sales and uh, going up to 2020, I've actually opened up and started my own brokerage, which has been the most exciting thing in the world because I want to train hungry agents or people that don't even have their license yet to realize their potential to start making money and chasing after success. Not to say that those two are affiliated with each other because money can't buy you happiness, of course, but it definitely can pay your rent and that's what made me happy at the time. Moral of the story is I wanted to share you kind of like my adventure over the past three years and I guess partially my excuse and why I haven't been putting out a lot of videos consistently, but now that I'm not necessarily transacting on a day-to-day -day basis I want to put up more videos and specifically how I got my business not only that to teach you how to convert business I want to be a little bit more real estate oriented on my channel so if you're interested in anything real estate then subscribe to the channel because I'm super excited to kind of start this as like the refresh of my channel really truly help people that are hungry for it so anyways I hope you guys enjoyed that video and thank you so much for watching